So does breaking the seal actually exist? You know what I'm talking about. You're hanging out at a local brewery and the beer tastes so good you find you've drank enough beer to drown a small Czech village. Well, the pressure's on and you announce to your buddies the inevitable. I have to pee. Don't break the seal, they respond, but it's too late. You head to the bathroom and do your business only to find you have to go back 15 minutes later and every 15 minutes for the rest of the damn night. If only you could have held out a little longer. Hey, this is Ryan from Beer by the Numbers, and I wanted to get to the bottom of breaking the seal to see if it was true beer science or just a trick of drinker's psychology. Today, beer is going to teach us about the ins and outs of the urinary system. Let's get started. The urinary system has a pretty important purpose in the human body. It produces, stores, and excretes the liquid waste from your body, and although it may not seem like it, the average person produces quite a bit of liquid waste. According to the National Institute of Health, the average adult eliminates 27 to 68 ounces, or 800 to 2,000 milliliters, of urine per day, depending on fluid intake. Wait. Did they just say depending on fluid intake? Well, there we go. Case closed. Already hear you typing in the comments. Ryan, you dummy. More liquid always means more urine. Well, not so fast, hasty viewer. I've got some evidence you may want to consider first. Scientists wanted to study whether it was just increased fluid intake or something specific to alcoholic drinks when it comes to breaking the seal. So they brought in some willing volunteers and separated them into three groups. Each group would be responsible for drinking two liters of a beverage over the course of an evening. One group, the control, was given water, another group, some Coca-Cola, and the final group, two liters of beer. The scientists then measured how many times each group used the restroom over the course of that evening. While all groups saw an increase over the average adult, those who drank beer went to the restroom nearly twice as often as the other groups that drank water and soda. So clearly there's something unique to beer that makes us go, but what? Part of what makes you pee so much while boozing is that alcohol inhibits arginine vasopressin, also known as the antidiuretic hormone, or ADH. ADH is made in the part of the brain called the hypothalamus, and then stored and released from the pituitary gland at the base of the brain. Its job is to conserve water in the body by reducing its loss in urine. ADH is quite the useful hormone, as without it, our kidneys would be working all the time removing water from the body, meaning we wouldn't have reserve water for all sorts of bodily functions. ADH binds to receptors on the kidneys and promotes water reabsorption, a decrease in the volume of urine sent to the bladder, and excretion of more concentrated urine. Alcohol throws a wrench into these works. It blocks certain nerve channels that help get ADH secreting out into your system. Without ADH carrying on about conserving water, the kidneys don't reabsorb water as easily and excess water winds up getting dumped into urine to leave the body. With alcohol keeping ADH from doing its job, you produce a lot more water diluted urine, which fills the bladder quickly and makes you have to pee more often. Alcohol's interference with ADH may also be a reason behind the dehydration that leads to hangovers as well, but that's a video for another day. The relationship between alcohol and ADH might explain why we have to pee more, but why does it seem like you can hold your pee just fine until you go to the bathroom once, and then you have to go constantly? First, it takes a little bit of time for the alcohol to suppress ADH and for the kidneys to ramp up the waterworks. When you crack open your first beer, you may have some urine in your bladder already, but also some ADH in your system to keep things from getting out of hand. As you continue to drink though, your ADH levels drop and your urine production increases. By the time your bladder has filled and you're ready to go to the john, you've probably already had a few drinks. Your ADH is more suppressed and your kidneys are working at full speed, so you're going to have to go more often from there on out. Additionally, alcoholic beverages can be a bladder irritant for many people and the carbonation of drinks like beer and champagne can cause gas and pressure that contribute to that irritation. As your bladder fills up again after the initial pee, 
All that irritation can create a very strong urge to pee and make your bladder feel fuller than it really is, sending you running to the bathroom over and over again throughout the night. So there's really no seal to break, no dam to crack open. If anything, the damage was done when you took your first drink and started suppressing your ADH, not when you take your first pee. If you like beer science videos, smash that like button down below. Once again, this has been Ryan from Beer by the Numbers, and I'll see you in the next video.